Dear Mariners, Welcome, to my channel The Sailing Beast. Please like, share and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell icon for updates on upcoming videos. Question Explains Cogs are Carriage of Goods by Sea Act, 1925. Unsh Article 1 Application of Rules Shall have effect in relation to and in connection with the carriage of goods by sea in ships carrying goods from any port in India to any other port whether in or outside India. Article 2 Risks Subject to provisions of article cover every contract of carriage of goods by sea the carrier, in relation to the loading, handling, stowage, carriage, custody, care and discharge of such goods, shall be subject to the responsibilities and liabilities, and entitled to the rights and immunities hereinafter set forth. Article 3 Responsibilities and Liabilities The carrier shall be bound, before and at the beginning of the voyage, to exercise due diligence to a. Make the ship seaworthy. b. Properly man, equip and supply the ship. c. Make the holds, refrigerating and cool chambers, and all other parts of the ship in which goods are carried, fit and safe for their reception, carriage and preservation. After receiving the goods into his charge, the carrier or the master or agent of the carrier, shall on demand of the shipper, issue to the ship a bill of lading showing among other things dash. a. The leading marks necessary for identification of the goods as the same are furnished in writing by the shipper before the loading of such goods starts, provided such marks are stamped or otherwise shown clearly upon the goods if uncovered, or on the cases or coverings in which such goods are contained, in such a manner as should ordinarily remain legible until the end of the voyage. b. Either the number of package or pieces, or the quantity or weight, as the case may be as furnished in writing by the shipper. c. The apparent order and condition of the goods. Such a bill of lading shall be prima facie evidence of the receipt by the carrier of the goods. However, proof to the contrary shall not be admissible when the bill of lading has been transferred to a third party acting in good faith. Article 4. Rights and Immunities. Either the carrier nor the ship shall be liable for loss or damage arising or resulting from unseaworthiness unless caused by want of due diligence on the part of the carrier to make the ship seaworthy, and to secure that the ship is properly manned, equipped and supplied, and to make the holds, refrigerating and cool chambers and all other parts of the ship in which goods are carried fit and safe for their reception, carriage and preservation in accordance with the provisions. Limit of liability is same as Hague Visby in India, Cogsa in US it is 500 US dollars per package. Article 5 Surrender of Rights and Immunities, and Increase of Responsibilities and Liabilities. A carrier shall be at liberty to surrender in whole or in part all or any of his rights and immunities or to increase any of his responsibilities and liabilities under the rules contained in any of these articles. Provided such surrender or increase shall be embodied in the bill of lading issued to the shipper. The provisions of these rules shall not be applicable to charter parties, but if bills of lading are issued in the case of a ship under a charter party they shall comply with the terms of these rules. Nothing in these rules shall be held to prevent the insertion in a bill of lading of any lawful provision regarding general average. Article 6 Special Conditions Article 7 Limitations on the Application of the Rules Article 8 Limitation of Liability Article 9 The monetary units mentioned in these rules are to be taken to be gold value, 